Hello, everyone. Hey, Uncle Frank, and hello, Alan. We're going to go through a review of the overall big picture uh, strategy and associated collective superintelligence for saving, healing, and transforming life on Earth. We'll probably spend about 15 minutes or so on this, and then I've got to I'll make a call at that point uh if my person is ready but i'll i'll check in and see at that point but anyway let's go ahead and screen share and i'm screen sharing my ipad on which i can draw very easily so <laughs> here's the big idea and i'm going to draw this like well first let me show you kind of an image of the spiral the idea of the spiral uh where do i have a picture of the spiral Da, 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 da. Okay, I had a different spiral, but anyway, the idea is like, let's say, let's say we're going to cover all of these topics on the circumference of this donut, and let's say that they're kind of sliced up into these different sections, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to make an initial pass, I'll show it in green, where we start here. And we'll go around all of these topics and come back to the beginning. And then for the next pass, I'll color it in blue. Then we'll do another spiral around all of these topics and come back to the beginning. And the next pass, I'll color it red. Anyway, you get the idea. And then we just keep, we just proceed like that. One spiral after the other. And so let's go ahead and draw the picture. But now I'm going to lay the spiral on its side so that we just see a one big circle. OK. So what are these topics that we're going to spiral around? Um, I'll just represent it like this. And let's say we start right here. The first topic is collective super intelligence, right? And we're going to apply collective super intelligence in a particular way, where I'm just going to call it the platform strategy, the platform strategy model, which we'll cover. We're basically going to use a platform for collective superintelligence to develop a, a specific strategy, right? So I'll talk about that at a high level. And then I'm going to break that strategy down into two kind of uh, trains of dominoes. You know, when you stack dominoes up and then you push one over and it knocks over all the rest. So we're gonna have two strains of two uh, domino trains, two series of dominoes that are gonna tumble, but they have a common starting domino, right? And the two trains of dominoes, one is focused on humanity and humanity's needs. And the other is focused on the planet, on Mother Earth and the needs of the planet. And we're gonna see that there's a, an initial domino that we can knock over that will cause both of those uh, sub-strategies, those domino trains. So the whole, the overall strategy consists of tripping over two trains of dominoes, but with a single starter domino. Okay, <laughs> and then we're going to go deeper into that starter domino, which is all about food. And we're going to learn, we're going to delve into that. And one of the things that will come out of the humanity row of dominoes is precisely the liberation of humanity. We're 
we're going to talk about that and the different aspects of that. The liberation of humanity, it turns out, is actually crucial to knock over this, the first domino in the planetary chain of dominoes beyond um, the first one, which is food. And that's the second one, which is SRM. So the next thing we're gonna talk about will be SRM, solar radiation management, right? And then we're going to kind of take a step back and say, ask the question, how do we get people involved at the very beginning, right? From the very beginning, how do we get people involved? How do we build a sufficient community to take all of this on, right? <clears throat> and we're going to talk about one thing that's very crucial for that is giving people choice, giving people choices. And we'll talk about that. Choices for topics that they can engage in to get them started. I'll call this for starters. How do we give people choices? Um, and then we're going to talk about how people first need to be heard before they're really ready to listen. This is just a general principle. And we'll see how that plays into all this. And from here, we're gonna take these two elements and these are both gonna point to, to the press conference, which I'll abbreviate TPC, the press conference, as a platform for enabling all of this, giving people choices, um, and empowering people to be heard so that they can then open up their minds to the point that they can listen, because both are important. People need to be heard and people need to listen to what they need to know that they don't know. That's also part of the liberation of humanity. And um, and then we're going to talk about one crucial aspect of all this, which I will call the universal calendar, which is basically a calendar of all the different topics and meetings that people can engage in. And so these all go together, the press conference, the universal calendar, people being heard before they can listen, giving people choices. And then the next phase is we're going to look at feedback and improvements across all of these elements that we've just been outlining, which we'll go into a bit deeper on the second pass. And the next phase will be, we will open up, open up to completely new ideas, way beyond anything that we've talked about so far. 
we'll talk about this opening up. It's a process of opening up to new ideas. And finally, we will have party time. That's actually an important part of the whole thing is partying and socializing. So we start here. This is the starting point. And we've just done an extremely cursory, um, you know, five minute overview of the whole thing. And now we'll go for a second pass. But before I do uh, a second pass, do you have any questions or comments about what you've seen so far? And if you'd prefer, I can go back to regular straight video where we just look at each other. I mean, that fourth one there or so, liberation of humanity, what is this? What do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, I'll, I'll get, but so, so, okay, yeah, let, let's talk about that because th this is a good point because instead of just going now in a linear way around the circle, let's just jump right there. So I maintain that, um, here, I'm just gonna go into video right now so we can see each other better. I maintain that right now humanity is not free. I am not free, you are not free. To the contrary, we are trapped in a game, um, a game which in its simplest terms is characterized by individual hoarding for individual survival. Okay, what I refer to as the all day monopoly game. Okay, the all day monopoly game. That's capitalism, right? And if you wanna eat, you have to have money. Sure, there are some exceptions, but uh, the exceptions are you know, aid programs and humanitarian programs that kind of try to fill in the gaps as best they can. But basically the fact that um, if you want to eat, if you want to have shelter, if you want to be able to travel, if you want to have clothing, if you want any of, you know, the good things in life, the material things in life, you need to have money. In order to have money, you need to accumulate it. And um, so I call that the all day monopoly game. It's kind of like a bunch of 10, 12 year old kids playing an all day monopoly game, trying to hoard as much money and property and houses and hotels as they possibly can until they beat everyone else, right? That, that, that's just the nature of global capitalism and the, the capitalist game that we're all playing. To liberate ourselves from that, and now I'll go back to screen sharing, to liberate ourselves from this all day monopoly game, I maintain that the, that the first step toward to liberation is food, feeding everyone right making and not just not just relief food you know beans and rice and porridge but really good food uh like the plant-based stews that we're going to be uh making available to everyone in los angeles now let's take a look at this other piece on the spiral which is this whole thread of dominoes which i call the humanity chain of dominoes which starts with food. This very first domino here is precisely the food domino. See this biggest domino you see there for starters? And that actually kicks off both trains going. That domino is called feeding everyone plant-based foods, okay? Um, and it gets both trains going, both domino trains going. Um, the humanity one and the planet one. It gets the humanity one going because feeding everyone food is the most basic human need. You have food, shelter, healthcare, community, you know, libraries and internet access, transportation, recreation, access to nature, you know, education, all these things. But food is the first and most important, followed closely by shelter and, you know, I mean, when I say food, what I really mean is food and water, 
followed by shelter and access to bathrooms and showers and laundry and all that kind of good stuff. That would be the second domino in the thread here. So food followed by you know shelter and basic services, healthcare, community, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, all of those dominoes as a train constitute humanity getting humanity's needs met. And when humanity gets her needs met, that is what will liberate humanity from what I'm calling the all day monopoly game of endless hoarding, individual hoarding for individual survival, right? That's the game that we want to liberate humanity from. Because think about it, Uncle Frank. Um, and it's not a coincidence that the next chunk, the next piece after the liberation of humanity is SRM, solar radiation management. Because ask your, have you asked yourself, why is it that almost no one has ever even heard of solar radiation management, much less supports solar radiation management? It's because we are consumed and trapped in this all day monopoly game of individual hoarding for individual survival, right? Now, a person like yourself who, you know, owns his own home and, you know, has plenty of resources for food and, and whatever else, you're not out there scrambling to make money. You know, there was a time when you had to work and whatnot and, and earn money, but you know, for you, that period has passed, but I'm saying for the vast majority of humanity, right? Hum the vast majority of humanity is seriously and severely trapped in a game of individual hoarding for individual survival. And because of that, they, they can really, it's really hard for them to focus on anything else. And most people are poor. Most people are struggling, living paycheck to paycheck or food insecure. And in that state, they don't have they don't have extra bandwidth to even look out for their relatives or neighbors or friends, much less a planet and its needs to to cool down with SRM. So that's what I'm talking about about the liberation of humanity, enabling us to finally put our attention to these other dominoes, which I'll put red dots over up here, the planet dominoes you know, SRM, cleaning up the oceans, restoring, replanting trees, restoring the forests, the ecosystems, et cetera, all the things in the realm of the planet. Now, the first domino of food, it's plant-based foods for all, because by feeding everyone plant-based foods and weaning humanity off of animal agriculture, that benefits both people and the planet because animal agriculture is the single biggest offender in terms of destruction of the planet, right? Anyway, that may have been a longer answer than you were looking for, but does, does that answer your question about the liberation of humanity? I just, I don't, know how much you want to link each of the segments of the circle though to the preceding yeah in in some cases the linkages are very strong and very direct and in other cases not so much so um but uh anyway um anyway but as i as i do the next pass around the spiral things will become more clear and I've got about eight minutes till I need to make a phone call, uh, but let's go ahead and cover some more ground right now, okay? So starting with collective superintelligence, right? And this is really how we apply it in terms of platform and strategy. So first of all, collective superintelligence. Collective superintelligence, as we're envisioning it, will manifest as, imagine each of these circles is a conversation, right? And you have all these different conversations which have different degrees of connection. I'll draw a double line, like a, a double covalent bond as a really strong connection and a single line as you know, a normal strong connection. 
and maybe a dashed line is somewhat of a tenuous connection. Yes, there's a connection, but it's not super strong. So you have all these different conversations in a network of conversations, right? That will span all the different topics that we need to concern ourselves with, including but not limited to every single topic you see here, including the unnamed topics in the rows of dominoes of meeting humanity's needs and taking care of the planet, okay? So think of this <clears throat> as a, a, as I'm describing it, as a network of conversations, okay? Okay. And, you know, with myriad connections, connecting them, et cetera. Okay. Um, And then imagine that each of these conversations, like the one we're having right now, um, as long as the participants agree, these conversations are recorded and transcribed, transcribed into text, right? Why is that important? So that people can then do a search. People can search and say, hey, I'm looking for, you know, SRM, for example or I'm looking for, you know, urban permaculture, for example, or whatever, whatever the topic may be, you can search for it and then find those conversations that deal with that topic that you're searching for, okay? And then you can actually then join those conversations thanks to something I mentioned before, which is the universal calendar. So this is the big idea is that, um, and if you consider all of these different tools, right, recording, um, actually, let's start with the, the more basic, which is video conferencing, what we're doing right now. Video conferencing, universal calendar, search, right? Um, transcription, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to bots software, basically, which helps you, uh, you, Uncle Frank, find those conversations that are most suitable to you, to your talents, to your passions, to your interests, et cetera, based on, I'll put in physics terms, as a function of what you have said in the various meetings that you've participated in, which are transcribed, right? All that text, everything that you've said provides clues as to what you're interested in what conversations you're interested in. So now consider all of this, the whole network of conversations, I'm just gonna do a big bracket, the whole network of conversations, the search functionality, the video conferencing, the transcription, the recording, right? The bots, the universal calendar, and many, many, many other features. Imagine that all of this constitutes what I'm calling the platform. The platform for what? For collective super intelligence. And imagine that on top of that platform, we are able to develop strategies. And that's another topic you see on the spiral up here. You see where it says platform strategy. See with this platform, we're going to be able to develop strategies. There's another crucial piece, which is community, which I address later, which covers, you know, how to, um, which is all about the people participating in these conversations, developing strategies, strategies like what? Like the, like the dominoes, like how do we, meet all of humanity's needs? How do we meet the planet's needs? 
How do we liberate humanity? Oh, we start with food and then that'll get the other dominoes tumbling, including SRM, right? Anyway, I need to take a little break to make a phone call. So let me stop screen sharing. Let me pause recording. And if you'd like, I can give you a call. Here, I'll pause recording now. All right, so now we're addressing questions. What do we got? No, it's just, you know, I'm maybe a little more impatient. I want to get to SRM <laughs> before right. trying to feed, to get too far with, you know, feeding even a small part of Los Angeles is going to take time. Well, that's an assumption. You're making an assumption that it will take time. And also you're making an assumption that we have to do this in a linear way that, you know, that everyone has to focus on feeding before anyone can focus on SRM. And that's not the case. But what I am maintaining is that there is a very strong connection between the two. Because in order for humanity to be able to focus on SRM, um, it, it's kind of like that old saying, before anyone can have, you know, morals, one must first have a full belly, right? People need, people need to be fed before they, now, someone like yourself, you've got a full belly, you've got a full pantry, so you know, you can think about SRM, right? But I'm talking about your average person, your typical human being, you're exceptional, you're a Shively. So, um, but your average typical human being is trapped in the game of individual hoarding for first for their own survival. And then once they've accumulated enough to survive, well, the game is designed such that we have virtually insatiable appetites. I worked for the richest person in the world for years. And that person, there's no end to his appetite for money and for possession, right? And that's the nature of the all day monopoly game um, is that everyone's trying to accumulate as much as they can. And as long as that's what they're focused on, they got no bandwidth for SRM. You and I are rare birds in that we have appetite for SRM, right? Now that's partly a product of our, privi of our privilege. Um, wait, Su Susan's entering the room right now. So let's say hello to Susan. And again, I just, I have to, let me say hello to, oh, here, here's 